So what is a battery cell? A battery cell is a device that stores chemical energy and converts it into electrical energy. And the chemical reactions inside evolve the flow of electrons. And as those electrons flow around, they create electrical current. So how do we measure the performance of lithium cells? We use what we call the C-rate. And basically the C-rate is the measure of the speed at which you can charge and discharge these battery cells. So considering our 12 volt, 100 amp hour slimline battery here, with a 1C charge and discharge rate, we know we can charge this at 100 amps and discharge this battery pack at 100 amps. But these high performance cylindrical cells that we use inside all our marine batteries can support up to 3Cs of discharge. And we typically allow these batteries to go up to 2Cs. So this 100 amp hour battery will discharge comfortably up to 200 amps. And in a later video, we're gonna show you exactly what that can do. It's important to note that the C rates for lithium cells are completely different to that of AGM or wet cells. This 100 amp hour DCS lithium battery can deliver 100 amp hours of its energy in one hour um, because lithium cells are very efficient. A lead acid battery on the other hand won't be able to deliver 100 amp hours of energy in an hour. It would be lucky if it can do that over a 20 hour window. So we've covered some battery theory but what does it all mean in real world applications? Well, let's pull the inverters out, let's pull out some gear, and let's see what actually happens. So here we are with our 12 volt, 75 amp hour marine battery. This is one of our smallest batteries that we produce. And we've got it connected to a 3000 watt inverter. And we're gonna see and do a load test and see whether this battery pack can power a kettle. And we've just got a standard 2000 watt a uh, kettle that you find in most kitchens and let's see if this little battery is able to do it. So in this kettle we've got one litre of water so that we're not um, doing a full jug because it's going to take quite a bit, bit of time. And uh, we've turned that inverter on now and we're going to turn this on and let's see, see how this little baby battery goes. Okay, so at full load there, boiling this jug of water, we're running at uh, 180 amps, so 2.2 kilowatts. And the battery management system there on our app shows us that we could run that load for 23 minutes. So it should only take three or four minutes to boil that jug of water. And uh, this little 75 amp hour battery should have no problems uh, cooking, the, uh, boiling that uh, jug of water. Now something to note is, um, the state of charge. So we're sitting at 95% already and the capacity is dropping fairly quickly because of course it's a very small battery pack. And what about the C rate? So a 75 amp hour battery at 1C would be 75 amps, at 2Cs would be 150 amps. And we're pulling 181, 182 amps at the moment. So we're, we're about a 2.2 C rate. So we're just over 2Cs at the moment. Uh, and of course you can see um, no problems with uh, boiling that jug of water in that little baby battery pack. Another thing to note about um, <clears throat> lithium batteries is the very low voltage sag. So 12.3 volts on such an enormous load on such a tiny battery pack and we're maintaining 12.3 volts. As a comparison, if you put that same load on a AGM battery at around 75 amp hours, in capacity, you would be well below 12.3 volts at that sort of load. Those battery packs are simply, you know, not designed and engineered to run such large loads um, on such tiny battery packs. And I can hear that water just about to start to boil. Just consumed 10%, sitting at 90% standard charge. Eighty-nine. That 
steaming away there now. Okay, she's done. So you can see there, even on that little tiny battery pack, we've um, ran at quite a substantial load. We've consumed 13% to boil one litre of water on a very large 2.2 kilowatt um, electric kettle. So you can see there, no problems at all. Uh, battery management system temperature there, we got up, the transistors got up to around about 84 degrees there on the heat sinks. Um, we will discuss more about that in some further videos, uh, but no problems there at all. And you can see we're back at a resting voltage now at 13.2 volts. So you've just seen there, the little 75 amp hour battery uh, boiled one liter a jug of water and quite a big um, electric kettle, 2.2 kilowatts that one. And it did it quite easily, um, maintained very, very nice voltage there at very high load at 12.3 volts. And um, if you can boil a jug of water on such a thirsty appliance, obviously this little battery pack will have no problems running an induction cooker or a um, coffee machine and whatever else. But let's try a coffee machine next and see, uh, see what happens. Okay, so we've got a, uh, an espresso coffee machine that also has a milk warmer. So we're going to make two uh, big cappuccinos here and let's see what sort of power consumption these are going to consume. So we'll turn that coffee machine on. Oop, will help if you turn the inverter on. And we'll turn that guy on. Let's start a preheat. Um, probably see what the power consumption is doing now. Just as that machine's booted up. Have a quick look. Wow, straight to 1.5 kilowatts. So that power consumption there is the heating elements now preheating. So the most power consumption is actually occurring now just as we, um, just after turning it on. So, let's get a pot in there. We'll get him going. And obviously running back to back on the same little 75. Straight after we run a kettle, um, we're going to make two coffees. And you can see there, tiny power consumption, only 9 amps, so 115 watts to actually utilize the brew unit and the water pump and most of the consumption is obviously the heating elements inside these type of machines. We started at 87% on this battery pack. Okay, so it's done the first one. Do a double here. Okay, second pod's finished. Now we'll go some milk. Let's see. Yep, so the heating element has come on. It's drawing 100 amps of 1.2 kilowatts during the milk heating and throffing process. Okay, so there's one cappuccino there, and what do we consume? So we're 87 down at 83. So about 4% state of charge on a 75 amp hour battery to make one coffee. So times two is about 8%. So you're using less than 10% of the capacity of this little battery to make two coffees and boil a jug of water. And we'll see what else we can do after we've done this test. And the heating elements come back on now, so 1.6 kilowatts. It's 126 amps. Okay. 
All right, got two cappuccinos just in time for a little break for lunch. And we'll have a look and see, we're sitting at 81%. So we've still got 81% after boiling a jug of water and making two coffees and an espresso in a coffee machine. Uh, I think we might uh, cook a steak next and see if we can utilize some more of this power in this tiny little 75 amp hour battery. All right, so we're gonna connect our induction. It says the Tefal, the Tefal, Tefal um, induction cooker. So we're gonna get him plugged in there. Now our battery is still at 81%. So let's see. Let's see if we can cook two decent sized steaks on the cooker. So we're gonna turn our induction cooktop on. Let's just check where she goes. So we're gonna go medium heat. And you can see when the induction comes on, we're about 1.3 kilowatts, okay? 100 amps. Now it's getting pretty windy, which is great because the advantage of these induction cookers is they can cook a steak in the wind. So we're soon gonna find out. Get that up, so we'll go uh, medium to high heat. Get that pan nice and hot. Okay, drawing 1.4 kilowatts, cool. So we got a couple of beef rump steaks. Just wait until that pan's a bit hotter there. Love these things and how quick they warm up. 160, all right, so that's bumped it up to 1.6 kilowatts. So that's a beautiful thing about these induction cookers. So you can really dial it in. They heat set in quite a bit. All right, it's been a couple of minutes there, get these steaks on. So these rumps are cooking away, medium to high heat. So it shouldn't take too long to cook those guys up. Yeah, 76%. Now the battery management system inside our little 75 amp hour batteries is quite small. It's only a 70, it's only 150 amp battery management system. Obviously our bigger batteries uh, run bigger battery management system so they can pull even more amount of power or supply more amount of power um, for even longer durations but we're just showing you the capability of our smallest battery pack the little 75s and the fact that on a 3000 watt inverter we've run we've boiled a liter of water we've made two cappuccinos and a large coffee machine running an induction cooker now and cooking two steaks and our little 75 amp hour battery is sitting at 74% right now and pulling 110 amps, 1.3 kilowatts. Uh, and give us, it gives us instantaneous running time there of 30 minutes. So, you know, even if we're gonna make these steaks super well done, we might be cooking for 10. If we're going for a nice medium rare or a medium steak, you know, it's only five or six minutes. So, we'll still have plenty of power left.
goodies in the wind. Basically unaffected. Is it getting, getting all that heat directly to the pan? No issues. Oh. Yeah, we're done already. Uh, one more minute. We'll go more medium. Um, that's running at... So lowest heat setting is 90, that's on 160. Maximum is 200. So 160, so medium, medium to high heat. Doing it easily. Those steaks will be ready in about another minute, if that. And of course, you know, in a real world application, your um, <clears throat> fridge will be running the whole time, drawing one or two amps, but also you'd have solar supply. So your solar panel will be offsetting, offsetting your fridge throughout the day and um, charging a battery. And obviously now if you're doing a cook, you'll be offsetting that load even more by your uh, solar supply. So those stakes are ready. Turn that induction off. Always a good idea to turn your inverter off. Only turn it on when you're running it. Alright, so 64%. Still got plenty of power inside this uh, little 75 amp hour battery pack. And there's no solar supply, nothing happening at the moment on this little battery. So you could probably cook, well, what do we use then? 15, 20%. So you could probably cook eight, maybe 10 steaks. Um, yeah, and you'd still have some power left over.